Today, I am going to talk about antibodies. And as you know that antibodies are glycoproteins. They are produced by B lymphocyte. And as can be seen here, this is the B lymphocyte. The B lymphocyte as an antigen presenting cell, they will take the antigen, internalize it by a process known as endocytosis, then it will get processed into peptides. These peptides will bind to the major histocompatibility class 2. And the major histocompatibility class 2, in association with a peptide derived from this bacteria, will get expressed on the surface of B lymphocyte. Now, T helper will see the peptide derived from the bacteria and will interact with it through the T cell receptor. In addition to that, a service molecule on the surface of T helper cell, known as CD4, will interact with a major histocompatibility class 2. This will lead to activation of T cell and accordingly, a ligand or a ligand known as CD4 T ligand will get expressed on the surface of T cell and it will interact with the CD40 molecule on the surface of B lymphocyte. This interaction will lead to upregulation of a molecule known as B7 on the surface of B cell. This molecule will interact with a molecule known as CD28 on the surface of the T helper. This interaction between B7 and CD28 will send a signal to the nucleus of T helper and activate genes for interleukin number 2, a cytokine known as interleukin number 2. This interleukin number 2 get expressed and will activate the T helper and B lymphocytes. Ultimately, this B lymphocyte get differentiated into B memory cell and plasma cell. This plasma cell will produce antibodies as a rate of 2,000 molecules per a second. And now let us come to the structure of the antibody. It is formed of two identical heavy chains, two identical light chains, and this area is known as the variable region of the heavy chain, and this is a variable region of the light chain. The heavy and the light are connected together by disulfide bonds. This part of the antibody or the antibody fraction, it is known as barotope. And it interacts with the epitope on the surface of the antigen. This is, these are the constant area of the heavy chain. And now I'm going to talk about the antibody class or known as immunoglobulin class or antibody isotypes. There are four, five antibody isotypes. These are IgM, IgD, IgA, IgE, IgG. IgD is present on the surface of the B cell. IgM, it is present in two forms. Either 
on the service of B, lymphocyte, or as a free form in secretions. IgM is a ferrous antibody that produced following the primary infection. However, secondary infection by the same microorganism will lead to production of IgG antibody. These IgG antibodies or immunoglobulin, they are around 80% of the total weight of immunoglobulin in the body. And they are taking they are taking the burden during the infection. The free IgM, it is bentameric. Bentameric means five, five antibodies like this. This is one antibody. Then here another one, this fourth, fifth connected together by joining chain or by J chain. It is pentameric. So it can capture 10 small molecules or five big molecules. And it is around 16% of the total immunoglobulin in the, in the body. So IgM and, Ig, and IgD they are either membrane bound, IgM, it is free, it is bentameric. IgA antibody, this IgA antibody, it is present in secretion, all body secretion, saliva, tears, mucus, as dimeric. Dimeric means one antibody like this. And one antibody like this, they are connected together by a joining pen, by a joining chain. But however, in the serum or in the blood, they are mono monomeric. Monomeric means single antibody. They are not di di dimeric. And it is around 10%. The weight of IgA is around 10% of the total immunoglobulins. IgA antibody, it is around 0.5 to 1% of the total immunoglobulin and it is responsible for allergy in case of bronchial asthma. And now let us come to how do antibodies work. Antibodies work by three ways. Either this way, which is known as neutralization. Neutralization means if we have an antigen, for example, toxin like this, the antibody will come and surround the antigen in red and prevent its action. So, this way is known as neutralization. And also, antibodies work by activation of the classical pathway of the complement. And as you know that, the complement component number one and the fraction of it, C1Q, it looks like this is a one many sticks, three stick to the small sticks to the left, three small sticks to the right. So the, these, these are two molecules of antibodies that capture this bacteria or this microorganism. So through this FC part, they bind to C1Q of, of the complement component number one, and this will lead to activation of C2 C4 and the classical pathway of the complement. Also antibodies, they work by a mechanism known as opsonization. Opsonization, this is the macrophage. 
The macrophage express receptors specific for antibodies. For example, this receptor FC gamma R1, it is specific for IgG1. And FC gamma R3 is specific for IgG3. If this bacteria or this microorganism get captured by this antibody, then the antibody by the FC part, this part we call it crystalloid fraction of the antibody. Crystalloid fraction. Why this part we call it antibody fraction or FAB? And this is we call it FC, FC crystalloid fraction. So this crystalloid fraction will bind to this receptor specific for IgG 1 or 3 on the surface of macrophage, this binding will activate the macrophage. So activated macrophage will produce nitric oxide, tumor necrosis factor alpha, chemical intermediates, and this in turn, it kills this uh, bacteria. So here, this we call it opsonization. And also antibodies in case, for example, of bronchial asthma. As can be seen here, this is muscle, muscle express receptors, specific for IgE antibody, IgE antibody. So in, in allergic and asthmatic individual, IgE will bind to receptors on the surface of the muscle. So following this binding, there is a cross-linking between these antibodies. This cross-linking will activate the muscle. So activated muscle will produce isinophil chemoattractant factor, histamine, platelet activating factor, neutrophil chemoattractant factor, uh, together with the product of arashi tonic, arashi donic acid, which are prostaglandin and leukotriene, they will lead to inflammation, bronchospasm, and bronchial asthma. And now let us come to monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies, that means antibodies recognize only single antigen, means monospecificity. For example, in case of a multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma is cancer of plasma cells. So in multiple myeloma, the plasma cell will produce excess light chains. Thank you very much, Professor Ahmed Bolad.